What's up guys? So this is my Rescue Ace matchup cheat sheet. And in this, I've got every relevant deck at the moment in the format and um, how you beat them, what it's like going first, what it's like going second, etc., etc. So if you want the link to this, it's in the description or it's in the comments, it's somewhere down there. Now, a couple of things before we get started. There are gonna be timestamps for each deck. So go and feel free to look through the spreadsheet. It's open to everyone, share it to whoever you want. But if you want more detail, this video is going to be that detail. So come back to the video and have a look and make sure you drop a subscribe and a like when you check this out. It's completely free, but the subscribe and like help me out. Next up, the different sections in this spreadsheet may change over time. Formats do evolve, formats do develop, combos will change. And so as such, this isn't final. If you're watching this in a year's time and I haven't updated in six months, I wouldn't trust it personally. So yeah, keep mindful of that. But yeah, let's go through um, the different sections and I'll explain kind of um, what everything's talking about, how it is. So there's the going first and going second. Now, what is this talking about? This is talking about how likely are you to win, on average, ignoring like crazy brick hands and stuff, going first and going second. How easy is it going to be for you to win? Then we've got the overall difficulty. Now, this isn't related to the going first and second. This is just how hard is the matchup? Do you need to know a lot of things? Do you not need to know a lot of things? Now, what you're going to find is there's not many matchups that are ones here. If this is branded, there'll be loads of ones and loads of fives. But as a mid-range deck, you're going to find that most of the matchups are going to be threes, twos, fours. Like you're going to see a lot in the middle. So your skill matters a lot. But that's good because what that means is that this is a deck that you will be highly rewarded for by knowing better and better and better and spending more and more time with. So that's why a lot of them are threes. Now, key cards and interactions, this is, there are different cards you need to focus on in the different interactions. And so I'm gonna list all of the cards that you need to know about for some reason or another, and then I'll go into it in the different sections in this video. Then there's the engine to beat. There are cards in your engine that will just win some matchups. You need to know, what do I need to focus on? What game state do I need to get to? But then there's also staples to beat. I would say this is similar to Sky Striker where your deck does not auto win matchups. So sometimes it is going to be dropping that shifter and seeing that shifter that's going to win the matchup. And I think that's critically, critically important. I'm also counting extra deck as staples to beat because it's not really part of your rescue ace engine. Then for the difficulty, so we've got one. If something makes a one, it means super easy. You should just win. Not really much thought required. It's very, very simple. If you are losing a matchup that's a one, in my opinion, it's usually because you've either crazily bricked, so there's a problem with your build or you're just bad unlucky, or there's a fundamental thing you're missing in that matchup. You shouldn't really be losing those one matchups. For the number twos, which is the somewhat challenging, these matchups are a little bit harder. Sometimes it requires a specific piece of knowledge is required, and then that matchup becomes really, really easy. Sometimes it's just it's quite favored towards you, but they do have a chance. The threes are the skill matchup, so this is whoever's better is gonna win. And a lot of the threes will become twos and ones as you get better at the game, as you get better with rescue ace. Fours is difficult. It's like it's not favored for you. It's not easy. There's a whole host of reasons why this could be the case. And five, I'd say, is impossible slash requires siding. So, for example, this is things like gimmick lock on branded sometimes. So, as you can see, for some of them, they have two ratings. And this is because normally branded is a 3.5. But if they're gimmick locking you, it's a five if you don't have bell because you just lose. You can't do anything against it. Similarly, um, synchro with the calamities lock, for example. If you don't have droplets, you just lose. Not much you can do about it. So, yeah, that's why we have things at five. So... To start off with, we're going to talk about Manadium. We're going to talk about Manadium, but we're going to talk about all of the new combo decks, which is Manadium, Synchron, and Infernobles, because they're all quite similar. So these matchups, they're all really interesting, and these are probably the, the less good Rescue Ace matchup. Rescue Ace doesn't really like decks that build a board because it doesn't crack boards well. So with all of these matchups, you need to keep in mind that if you go first, it's pretty easy to win a lot of them. I would say Synchron's probably the hardest, in my opinion, because of... I think revolution synchron being able to synchro from the hand allows it to extend in a unique way that the other decks can't but it's still not the most impossible thing you do need to keep in mind certain things though with manadium um hitting the level twos with extinguish is huge because the level twos floating give them the infinite tuners and that allows them to do so much and it gives them the field spell benefits as well if you can pop those level twos with extinguish and turn them off so extinguish plus hydrant I mean, there's no way for them to win a lot of times. They just aren't going to be able to combo. Similarly, Contain is quite nice as well on the level twos, but most of the time you're going to prefer to extinguish. Contain is better on v Visa Star Frost because if Visa Star Frost gets on the field and you contain him, it becomes awkward for them to remove him because they can't link him off. They can't fusion with him. I, I'm pretty sure they can't fusion someone with him on the field as well. I might be wrong, but someone confirmed. I'm pretty sure it's just fusion XYZ link or synchro. 
And then not only that, but they can't even attack with it as well, which is really, really nice. Then reinforce. So what you're going to find in a lot of these combo matchups is that they haven't got a way to deal with a boosted turbulence. If turbulence is at four, if turbulence is at five k, or if fire engines at four k, and he's just on the field and it's reinforced, they haven't got spells and traps that can out this. Menadium do have the scareclaw field spell, but they go through that in their combo, so they might not have that up. And so yeah. Uh, a reinforced turbulence will be something you can sit on a lot of these matchups to beat them synchron is a little bit different because they will hand loop you as well which makes it a bit harder than manadium manadium ends on barone and all of this stuff which is all really irritating and they end on a counter trap which is is irritating but you can at least play synchron i think they are hand looping you for two it might be more but i'm pretty sure they're hand looping you for at least two of this power which means that you're going to be starting with four cards and then they have a bunch of negates on the board. And so I think that makes Synchron a little bit harder. Having said that, with Synchron, it's quite straightforward. I would say Contain on Speeder is huge. Con Speeder just summons so many good cards and it does so much by itself. So containing that and denying them from summoning anymore is very, very big. Apart from Contain on sp um, Speeder, Extinguish is not too bad on some of their Synchros, especially stuff like Dispatter. If you Extinguish Dispatter and get him off the field and deny them the extra summon, that's also really, really good. The Reinforced Turbulence is going to be nice as well, but really in a lot of these matchups, Hand Traps is what's going to win. You're not really going to be consistently beating these combo decks if you're just kind of um, hoping that your traps are going to win going second. That's not how it works. You're going to want to hand trap them, slow them down, and that's what, what's going to give you a chance going second. Infernoble's probably the most different. Like, these two are very, very similar. Manadium and Synchron. Infernoble, I'd say, is a little bit more different, but Inf Infernoble, I would say, it's really important to hit that as old if they do go in the as old line. Containing that is huge because you deny them, like, it's like a, a, a minus three because you deny them the search then you deny them the special from deck and the dump which is really good as well um contain is also very nice on the charles contain and extinguish now i'm not sure of the ruling but i'm pretty sure if you extinguish charles it applies to the link as well if they try and use the link to take the name because it says same original name so what i would say is that extinguish is really nice on both the link one and on charles contains really nice on the link one and charles another thing is preventer preventer is also interestingly good against infernoble um, did I put that here? But no. Prevent us. This is why you should watch the video, guys. Prevent is good against Infernoble for results as well because a lot of times they equip their cards to their monsters. You prevent a flip it, the cards just all go to the graveyard, which is so, so good. So definitely keep that in mind. It's going to be really big. And I'd actually say that applies with Synchron a little bit as well. Prevent our flipping their monsters down will be quite nice. Now, what do we need in terms of side? Look, all of these are the same. It's it's your standard combo decks. So Super Poly is very, very good. Dark Rear No More and Kurokara are also very good. However, the disadvantage of them is you need to go to main phase against synchron they're going to calamity lock you you need to keep that in mind that's what they're doing they're going to hand loop you and calamity lock you and so if you can't do something in draw phase you do just lose sometimes which is why they have the kind of five manadium i think they can calamity lock you as well someone may have to correct me on that but yeah you just you really need to be careful of that and so if that's the case droplets is what you need to help that or you need to have loads of your hand traps in the kind of in their turn and stop them there now when you're going first especially post side D barrier is amazing against all three. The one it's worst against is Manadium because they can link and fusion, but it's harder for them to kind of do infinite summons if they don't have any access to synchros. You do want hand traps. Droll, Nib, Veil are all very, very good at the moment. I'm at the mindset at the moment that I think three Nib is not bad. Three Nib, three Veil just does good against most decks. So I think it's not a bad idea. Shift is also really, really good. Now you do have to be careful. Manadium can combo a little bit through Shifter, but for the most part, if you shift to these decks, they're not doing too much. You're not going to be insta losing to any of them. So, yeah, those are the three combo decks. They may change, but for now, I'd say they're all fairly difficult matchups if you lose the dice roll, but all not ma all manageable, definitely. So next we go on to Pearly. So Pearly gets a lot better. They have the ability to bring out um, the new XYZ off. Look, guys, I don't know names of cards. Sorry. But they have the new XYZ that comes off Sleepy Memory, which means Sleepy Memory is not a brick anymore. Sleepy Memory is probably the best card now on the deck. And with that, that's that um Sleep Mary gets them two set um it gets them a draw two, a traps, and two bounces, which is amazing. I mean, think about that. So they've basically gotten four things off one card that were well, 1.5 cards, which is so so good. So what does this mean? Well, it's actually good for us because before sometimes they would end on a big ass um noir. Now they don't actually end on big noir anymore. They end on a small noir that has two bounces. And do you know what defeats that small noir with two bounces, which is why this is good in the OCG? 
impulse. You do want some an impulse that outs that. It deals with that. Now, they still have the follow-up, but one thing you have to remember about Pearly is while the draws are a bit scary, a lot of the cards in their hand are fake cards. It's a bit like Runic without the field spell, where it's like the cards don't do anything. They've just added a bunch of Pearly cards, which means they can follow up on their turn. But as far as your turn's concerned, you don't really care. And so what does this mean? In my opinion, out the crap out of their monsters. Don't be scared that they're going to get recursion. Don't go into weird, awkward lines trying to stop this recursion because it doesn't matter. They're not they're not doing anything. You just kill them if you can on that turn. There are some lines to kill in this deck as well, by the way. One impulse, one no, one airlifter is enough to kill someone if you play it well because you're going to go into access code and then you're also going to have a turbulence on the board. So, right, um, what else is important? The field spot. The field spot is quite scary to deal with just because the field spot does stop you targeting with hand traps. So what does this mean? If they have the field spot up, it is going to turn off the best hand traps against them, which are going to be things like failure, which means only your ash is going to be as good. But if they don't have field spot up, you definitely want to hit that Lily with the Veiler. Hitting the, the um, Lily with uh, hitting Lily with Veiler is so big because you deny them a search and you stop Lily being able to summon. Another thing I would suggest as well, though, is sometimes let let them get the Lily search, let them get the Pearly search, and just Veiler them when they attempt to X Y Z. Pearly doesn't like non-destructive removal. If it's destructive removal, they can dodge it with Happy. But if you Veiler the Lily when they attempt to XYZ into it, that's a lot more punishing and it can really stop their turn. It can stop them getting into those cards because it means they're going to have to discard an extra card from hand and do extras to play. Now, Happiness. Happiness OTK is something you do need to keep in mind. And so, in general against Pearly, I would never advise just leaving a bunch of monsters in defense. It won't work. And what will happen is we'll get to their turn They'll just do a bunch of random summons. You'll be forced to use your cards because they have a lot of advantage and then they're going to happiness OTK you. So don't do that. Only card I would ever recommend leaving in defense is going to be the fire well, fire engine and higher, basically. So fire engine, prevent and turbulence. Why is that? Because all three of those cards with reinforced become so big, and this is 4,000 higher, that even if they're playing noir and they've got a bunch of cards delicious, it's very difficult for them to out it. It stops the happiness OTK. It stops them getting huge amounts of advantage as well because happiness won't be able to change the position, which means even though they can get multiple attacks of happiness, they're going to lose a lot of HP, which will allow you to kill them on the crackback. So definitely be careful about that. Now, what's going to be good in this matchup? Well, Impulse. Impulse, like I said, is probably the best card. Normal Summon Impulse beats most of the boards they make. If they earned on Beauty, Normal Summon Impulse beats it. If they end on Noir, Normal Summon Impulse beats it. What do you do? You Normal Summon Impulse. Now, if the Purdy player is good, they will just chain their ability there. It's a smart thing to do. Why? Because your Impulse is going to tribute to Summon from deck anyway. But if the Purdy player is bad, you're going to Normal Summon Impulse, they're not going to do anything. Then you're going to chain Impulse. What does this do? It stops the player from activating that monster's effects with the highest attack. Now, do be careful here because um noir only has 1100 attack which means if they have another monster of high attack than noir which is very possible at only 1100 attack like a sylvan princess sprite for example i think is 1800 if they have another monster on the field of higher attack you can't actually negate that noir but if they just have noir on board you normally send impulse you use the effect now the noir can't actually stop bounce any more of your cards if they do train noir to bounce the impulse you tribute that and you have two choices depending on what's in your hand if you have something like a um, airlifter in your hand, if you have a preventer, one of your combo starters, then just summon anything. It doesn't really matter. If you don't, you usually want to summon fire engine because fire engine can shoot or another card from the deck. Or you can summon turbulence as well to bait them into thinking you have loads. They're going to bounce the turbulence as well. You've out their whole board, which is really, really good. So yeah, keep this in mind. Noir, do Noir does kind of beat the pearly board by itself. What else do you need to know? Contain. Contain is going to be best on Lily. If you contain on the Lily, they can't XYZ with it. You're going to stop the search. They can't link with it. I mean, it's huge. And Extinguish, you usually want to use it on the white pearly. If you use Extinguish on the white pearly, it's very, very nice as it means that the extra copies, the white pearly is a once per turn. So the extra copies of the pearly they get aren't going to do much. They're not going to get an advantage off them. They're not going to be able to search. They're not going to be able to XYZ. It's going to be so, so huge. So that's going to be really big for the pearly matchup. So look, like I said, I don't think the pearly matchup is hard. I think it's a very knowledge-based matchup. And so your side is not what's going to win the matchup for you. But in spite of that, you do still need to know some things, which is why I've said it's 2.5 if you're going second. It's a little bit harder if you're going second. But yeah. Um, what stables do you need? D-Barrier, Shifter. Luster Soldier is very, very good in this matchup as it can't be targeted. So if it gets up too big, they just can't do anything about it. And Pearly takes a while to kill you sometimes. Underworld Goddess and Kaijus are sometimes necessary if they're going for a big Noir. 
it's not always going to be necessary, so it's really going to depend on how they play and what they focus on. And Kurokara. Kurokara is always going to be good. It's a nice card, especially if you're playing Small World. Next up, we have Kashira, And Kashira is probably one of your easiest matchups, in my opinion, just because you have so many interactions that just naturally beat Kashira. So, where do we start? Well, Kashira, um, with the, with, in general, I would say, whatever they do first, just contain it. If they summon Fenrir, if they summon Unicorn, you usually don't care, just contain it. Why is this? They can't link off of it, and Kashira has limited bodies. So even if they summon with a Fenrir, it means they need an extra Fenrir, and an extra Unicorn, and a Theosis, and a Birth. They need so many extra cards to play that if you contain their first summon when they attempt to search, that usually will stop their turn. Extinguish, I would say that is usually going to be best on either a Rise Heart or Scareclaw. Why am I saying this? A Rise Heart is good because they can special summon and normal summon a Rise Heart, but if you extinguish it, its level is not going to modulate. It's also good on Scareclaw, because Scareclaw Kashira is usually how they're going to try and cheat out your monsters. So, for example, they're going to do things like, if you have a Black Cluster Soldier or something they can't defeat, they're going to summon the Scareclaw um, a Rise Heart. If you have a Terror Hurts or whatever, that's what they're going to do. And so extinguishing and getting that Scareclaw off the field is going to be really, really useful. You don't need to do magic against Kashira, though. Most time, you're going to beat them. A Rice Heart. A Rice Heart's very easy to beat. Normal Summon Impulse beats a Rice Heart the exact same way it beats Noir. The only difference is a Rice Heart doesn't have a... Um, a Rice Heart is not a, uh, a Towers, so it's not as relevant. But yeah, and Preventer as well. Preventer, Booking of Moon in their cards is going to be big as well. I would say as well, especially into the Kashira matchup, I would never really risk going into my major combo. Your engine does naturally beat Kashira, and so going into kind of terahertz lines and all these things, I think it's pointless. Conserve resources, you do beat them. It is hard for them to just outright kill you because you have a lot of ways to dodge their effects. So yeah, just play it safe. Your engine's more consistent. It naturally beats them. It definitely should be good for you. What stables do you need? I don't know. Droll, Dark Cruella, Evenly are all good, but you shouldn't need staples to beat this matchup. They should only really be beating you with staples, and so I wouldn't worry too much about it sprite sprite is very similar to the combo decks in terms of how how it plays in that when going first it's not too hard to stop you do need a bit of knowledge and it will depend on the variant as well however going second it does make an uncrackable board and what makes sprites board harder than a lot of decks it does often have spell and trap interruption as well and you don't do well against spell and trap interruption you do good against monster interruption not against spells and traps now their monsters are small but getting to the battle phase against sprite is an effort as well so i find that hard as well so what do you want to do? You want to contain on Gigantic and Sprint. Now, the annoying thing about Sprite is it really depends on a variant. Like, Life Twin Sprite, contain on Gigantic, a lot of times is not that relevant because they'll have Life Twins. Um, however, contain on Sprint in almost all variants is going to be huge as it will limit the amount of link summoning they can do. And also, Sprint does give a lot of advantage because Sprint will send the Beaver or something and they'll get two summons and all of this. So, yeah, contain on Sprint is going to be very, very nice. Also, I didn't put here, but Contain on Jet is also quite important. And I especially say this in long protracted game states. In Sprite, the main card you need to fear is Jet. And the, the way to, and the reason why you need to fit Jet is because Jet gets smashes, which doesn't target and banishes. So that beats most of your cards. So containing Jet is going to be very, very important. And if they do something like Blue, then Blue summon Jet and you contain Jet. That really heavily limits them because it means now they need another extender to play because you've basically invalidated one of their extenders. So definitely keep that in mind. However, if a sprite player activates sprite smashes, what do you do? Look, it's really, really simple. I say this all the time. Now, it depends on whether you have a bunch of spells and traps or not. But in general, if they activate sprite smashes, you activate emergency and you send a prevent to grave. What's going to happen? They're going to, if they do banish one of your monsters, and usually it's going to be a monster, then preventer is going to immediately summon that monster if they banish a spell and trap and you've got a turbulence on the field you're going to get a free pop off that so always remember emergency is a good card into the smashers but you just want to stop the jet don't let them get to it because that's how they're out on your cards you need to also remember sprite going second the way they beat you is zeus and shadow mosquito those are the only two cards you really care about. zeus shadow mosquito and, and carrot are the only three cards you really care about going set when sprites going second against you so as soon as they use gigantic as soon as they use starter Zeus is turned off, which means you know the only way they're killing you is either they're going to be going into Ninja Shadow Mos Mosquito or they're going to have some crazy side card that's going to be you, which means if they use Sprite, also if they use a Smashers, if they, sorry, if they use a Starter, if they use Gigantic, a lot of times it's very, very okay to just contain and stop that. Or I'll let the Gigantic through, then whatever they summon off that, just contain that. Stop them there. That's not going to allow them to play anymore. It's going to be very hard for them to out your board. Extinguish is also very good in this instance as well, where, again, let them use Gigantic, let them use Start, then just extinguish what they make. 
they're not playing much after that if shadow mosquito gets on the board though that is really 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 frustrating for you and so preventer is going to be your way to deal with it preventer is going to book a move map so you usually want to save an emergency so you can out that and the nice thing as well is if you have a big turbulence on the board and they have shadow mosquito a lot of times you can put hydrant on the board instead so you can send whatever you have put hydrant on the board now you don't really take relevant damage and it's unlikely they're going to have gamma burst and ninja shadow mosquito and like and scoring second all of this so you shouldn't need to worry about that now um how do you beat the sprite matchup it's like i said there's all the ways to beat it but what are the staples you need super poly is really good dark ruler is really good now going second into sprite it's not easy to win against them and hand traps in my opinion aren't great against sprite so it is definitely a hard matchup i'll say this is one where it's it's very dice rolly um it, it does have skill in it but if the sprite player goes first and they're playing good and you both over an average they should win i would say more often than you just because their deck is a better way of playing your deck and they don't lose to nib as well which is quite frustrating but yeah that's the sprite matchup so illusion i'm not going to go into depth in illusion just because illusion is not that good that's not his truth the only thing you need to worry about is ash mirror swordsman in, in, in if they're playing illusion don't ash branded fusion all they're bringing is all they're bringing off that is rinbrum and you don't need your extra deck don't waste your time ashing that. Just ash mirror swordsman. The other option is ashing the chimera if it comes out, but chimera is almost always going to be chain blocked. Chimera, chimera, someone can tell me if I've said that wrong. Um, that's always going to be chain blocked. So in my opinion, it's it's not worth waiting for that. Just ash mirror swordsman, they lose. They can't do anything. Um, how do you beat them? Your field spell. Field spell and reinforce. Um, they can't out your reinforced monster very well. It's not easy for them. And the field spell grind is going to make it very hard for them to play against you. As long as you're continually, because they're going to be doing a lot of destruction, it means that your field spell is continually going to be able to be reset by reinforce, which just wins that matchup for you. So look, don't worry about illusion. You shouldn't really be losing to them. I personally would never side a card specifically for illusion right now. I don't think it's good enough. But D bar if you need to, just treat it like branded, but worse. Branded, on the other hand, this is the deck I was playing all last format. And I think Branded is absolutely crazy. The thing about Branded is that it's very good at just winning games for free. Where it's like your skill, your opponent's skill doesn't really matter. Did the Branded player brick? They lose. Did the Branded player not brick and they can play through Ash? They win. And so, Branded. What cards do you need to worry about? So many bloody cards. Branded Fusion, you need Ash. Now, a nice thing is that in your deck, you can add Ash back with Sunlight Wolf. And I would actually say that prioritizing getting Sun Ash back to hand with Sunlight Wolf is more important than Turbulence set for in this matchup. So sometimes I will even go into Heat Soul Lines against this deck. Why? Because Turbulence set four is good. However, I can Turbulence set four and then they can just keep summoning over and over again. And I only really have two interruptions and a Book of Moon, which doesn't do anything at Branded. But if I can Ash that Branded Fusion or Ash that Fusion Deployment, it will stop all of those castigating plays and allow me to win so really prioritize getting ash to your hand if you play small world search ash i would search ash over a start against branded because i know my deck is that is more consistent than theirs and so i can afford to kind of pass one turn and do that against them quem and cartesia contains are good on them but not amazing the other problem with branded is they do have a way to a lot of ways to dodge targeting so it's going to be a problem for you and then they've got albion dragoon and gimmick so albion and dragoon on target monsters are hard to deal with you're going to need your underworld goddesses you're going to need your reinforced turbulence reinforced turbulence does do a lot in this matchup as that's a very big monster hard for them to out because they don't have a lot of spell and trap removal but honestly and truly it's not easy if i was you guys and i was against a branded player and I see Albion and I see Dragoon, I'm not going to be happy. Super Poly is going to help. It's going to be how I beat them. And Gimmick Puppet, look, like I said, it's a 5 out of 5 going second. Like, yeah, if you don't have Bell, you just lose. Now, I would say this is really dependent on what the meta is you're expecting. Right now, I don't think a lot of people are going to be a branded. Not because I think the deck is bad. I think it's actually one of the best decks right now. But I think people are more interested in the new decks. They're going to at most play Illusion branded. And so I'm not siding with branded right now. But I would say that you may need to put Bell in your side deck at some point to deal with that um, gimmick puppet lock because it's just crazy. You can't really do anything about it in your deck. So, um, staples. What staples do you need? D-Barrier, Ash, Sunlight Wolf returning. Turbulence is also going to be really good as well. Um, next up, Sword Soul. Sword Soul is not too difficult of a matchup. I'd say Sword Soul is like a worse branded where it's like they don't... It's like branded but fair where they're doing everything in synchros and they're doing a lot of interactions but nothing to worry about what are some key cards and interactions i would say the tangy quick play is quite big especially because the tangy quick play will allow them to dodge your extinguish and contain which are quite big and contain on moe wins this matchup if you can ever contain like a moe or on, on board it's so hard for them to play through because you keep that on board and even though they've got a tune on board they've got an effect monster on board as well so they can't synchro they can't get another card on board they just lose so contain is very 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 good in this matchup 
but the tiny quick play allows them to play through that if they have that so be careful of that blackouts also also something to keep in mind you can't set cards willy nilly against sword soul because they will have blackout and sword soul does kill you like this and so for example don't just set cards to bluff against sword soul it won't work they're just going to black out at the end of the turn and kill you so it's not worth it keep the cards in your hand if you've lost you've lost it's not worth certain cards and hoping it works because it won't the shooter is another card that's a little bit difficult but what i would say is you have to remember all of the swords or all of the tangy cards do have to put themselves on the board first which means that again the tangy quick play is a little bit frustrating but if you can contain an ashuna if you can contain a vashuda if you can contain an adhar on board horrible that's a lot of the times going to stun them out of the game and then backseer as well i'd say extinguish slash, slash contain is good on backseer just because backseer is going to bounce two cards but if you extinguish it they don't get the summon and they can't do another one so yeah backseer is definitely a card you need to worry about for them so how do you beat them impulse impulse is very very good in the um in the um sword soul matchup just because they have a lot of monsters that activate on the field and then impulse is going to drag another card from the deck and especially if you have something like a rescue spanish you impulse bring up preventer they kill the preventer preventer summon something else back it's just very hard for them to deal with and then what do you need in terms of staples and siding d barrier nibiru again sword soul is not a matchup i think you will need to worry about too much it's not a particularly challenging one for rescue ace because i don't think you need dedicated side for it so you should be playing nib already d barrier you probably should be playing already and so i wouldn't worry too much past that vanquish soul so vanquish soul is a very frustrating matchup and i'll tell you that this is another matchup where even though it's not specifically hard it will a lot of times just rely on what side cards they're playing um if the vanquish player soul has uh, if the vanquish soul player has like just random kaijus and kurokaras and stuff you can just lose for free but you can also just win for free if they don't have those cards in hand it's it's quite annoying but there are some things you can watch out for now in my opinion i'm a big advocate of just letting them play their game they don't have a consistent way of outing your field spell most of them aren't playing pantera and even though they might have like other cards in the engine a lot of them aren't me most of them aren't main decking like random cyclones and stuff at most they might have a duster in deck and because of that establishing your field spell very early on i think is important and reinforcing your turbulence is important as both of these things will make it hard for them to play against you impulse normal summon is also very very good against vanquish soul because they do need to activate a bunch of cards on board so you normal summon impulse you activate its effect they're gonna have to do something otherwise they're um the link one is dead on field which is horrible for them and then you just play from there now keep in mind with vanquish soul their cards can only bounce themselves between the field and the hand during the main phase which means that sometimes you can also play in the battle phase and play in the draw phase with your quick plays and such which makes it hard for them to interact with you another thing as well is that you usually want to make sure you summon in the zone so they might have a fenrir or a pancratops or they might put the link one in the zone summon in those zones don't summon in blank zones as if you do what's going to happen is they're going to summon i don't know the name they're going to summon the vanquish soul that pops and then you're going to lose the card for free vanquish soul also have a bounce but i'll say their bounce is actually not that good most of your rescue aces do have high defense and so for example if they do the one that bounces the monster with the lowest defense on board if you have anything bigger than the air lifter it's not gonna it's not gonna be a problem so i would say it's definitely not something not to watch about one thing you do need to watch about for these deck though is their burn vanguard soul do have an alternate win condition where they can just keep getting advantage and burning you every turn they kill you in four turns one turn your turn their turn your turn their turn you're dead that's nine thousand that's no i'm wrong they kill you in six turns your turn their turn your turn their turn your turn their turn that's nine thousand damage you die what does this mean you need to be careful you can't be greedy with your battle phases against vanquish soul and the reinforced turbulence is going to let you survive if you're greedy with your battle phases against them they get like one or two attacks through they're just you're going to notice they're not even going to start risking battle phases against you they'll just start burning you and drawing cards and it'll be impossible for you to win so don't be greedy make sure you're keeping your your spells and traps on field they can't out your spells and traps very easily when they're on board and so establishing your spells and traps establishing your field spot and then playing it slowly removing the advantage getting them to the point where they only have big bodies on field and then removing the big bodies because a lot of the times they're going to use their bounces they'll only have big bodies on fields so no more bounces you get rid of those big bodies you attack you're going to be in a great position but still this is a hand dependent matchup i would say that in my opinion most of the time i just side out hand traps against this deck and i put in board breakers i don't even want to interact with them the only hand trap that i really really like against the only two hand traps that i really, really like against the deck are going to be ash and droll droll's good because they do do quite a bit of searching and ash is good because ash can't be dodged by their like raisin or like by raisin bouncing down because of season all of this 
But yeah, that's Rank and Shoal. Very annoying matchup, but I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just annoying because it doesn't feel like it's in my power. But as for annoying matchups, we're going to talk about two of the worst matchups. And the first one is Striker. So going first, I would actually say is very, very hard. Striker will destroy you going first. Why? Because they play a bunch of board breakers and that's what you're weak to. You don't really lose to a Striker engine super hard. But you will lose to Talents and Thrust and Evenly and Storm and Dust. And they're going to do all of this stuff. So look, if someone just says go first, assume they're playing something like Striker. Don't commit too much to the board. The other problem with Striker is that they have most of their interaction in the forms of spells and traps. Your deck can't deal with that. So how do you beat Striker? BLS, to be honest. You want to get to a card like BLS. That will allow you to kind of put pressure on them and then that plus your engine will let you win. Um, the other thing is Emergency. Emergency is really good in these spell and trap matchups that aren't, you're not good against as Emergency will allow you to dodge effects that are important. So a lot of times they're going to try and wither rank on something. You're going to use the Emergency so you can make sure you resolve that effect. The Field Spell, they can out your Field Spell but not that easily actually. Afterburner's pop is not always going to come up to get rid of your Field Spell and so... Because of that, establishing your field spawn and getting that grind going is good. They also, unless they've specifically put in like a cyclone or something, they're not going to be banishing the field spawn. So reinforced plus field spawn is going to be very, very, very nice. Um, I would actually say that Strider Strike is probably one of the matchups where I'd say anti spell is okay to side in this. It's not terrible just because it does slow you down, but it slows them down a lot. And you really, really don't like these Sky Striker matchups. One thing to keep in mind as well is I would almost completely avoid the extra deck don't invest too much resources just because if you invest in the extra deck and they like widow anchor take it's huge and then also you have to remember rose gets special summons itself from the grave when a monster leaves the extra monster zone which means that sometimes you can put yourself in an otk because of that another card to keep in mind is linkage as well if you try and use your contain and your extinguishers they can a lot of times just use linkage and then dodge your spell and then you've lost a lot of advantage so you do need to be careful of that all in all sky striker is a really really hard matchup it's not you favored at all it is going to rely on you hitting bls now the thing is sky striker is a hard deck to play and it doesn't auto win stuff which is why i would say it's not a five like labyrinth for example but it's still very very hard similarly runic fuck runic man like i don't know key cards and interactions <sighs> Runic sucks. Runic is, a, Runic is just striker with even more spell and trap interruption and it also banishes. And the banishes isn't always actually the worst thing for you because of preventing the field spell, but sometimes you will just auto lose to Runic because they'll banish your reinforcing your field spell. You've lost your grind and then you can't kill them. BLS is also big in the Runic matchup. Anti spell is also big in the Runic matchup. It really depends on the variant they're playing, for example. If they're playing like a Fur Hive variant or a Sprite variant, sometimes your side cards are going to be big, but really, again, it's BLS. BLS is how you beat them. None of your engine does a huge amount. Emerge Emergency is a very, very good card in that runic matchup, though. And I would say that I'd probably just say that's probably the only key interaction where they have one effect negation. You don't care about the effect pops. I've just dropped a drink, but whatever. You don't care about their effect pops. But if you can dodge their effect negation through emergency, that's going to be very big. So you normally summon your airlift to get the effect. You normally summon your hydrant to get the effect. Remember, hydrant can't be targeted with another card on the board as well. So a lot of the times, I'll have one card on the board and they'll forget. I'll normally summon another card. And it's too late now because they haven't outed it now. And now my Hydra can start doing things. So definitely keep that in mind. But Runic is a hard matchup. I would say in general, Runic is a little bit easier when you're going first. Just because you can turbo into BLS, for example, if you know it. But it's a little bit harder than Striker going second. Because they have a lot of dedicated cards that just destroy you. And they tend to just play board breakers. They don't play hand traps as well, which is even worse. Um, Plunder, it really depends on the variant. In this, I'm talking about pure Plunder. Um, if it's Runic Plunder, it's the same as every other Runic matchup. But pure plunder, I would say, is it's a it's a difficult matchup, and it's just because I'd say they're very good at getting advantage, and you don't have a lot of ways to consistently deal with their board. Like you can sometimes pop one or two cards, but plunder is not that bad at spamming cards on the board. Now they will run out of resources in the extra deck over two, three, four turns, and so if the game gets past like I'd say three or four turns, you're in a good position. But to get to that point and be ahead of Plunder is not straightforward. Now, Reinforced Turbulence is going to be very, very nice. You're also going to want to contain on the Link 2, but be careful. You want to wait for the Link 2 to use its effect and then contain it. That's going to be really, really big. Um, Preventer is also quite nice in the Plunder matchup just because a lot of times they need to get two monsters on board and then do the Link 2. Now, more people play Plunder blind second than they do kind of playing it first. And so if that's the case, the board breakers are going to be frustrating for you. But again, you just need to be careful of your matchup. So what are the kind of things you need to know about? Plunder's going to put a token on your board, so you need to be careful. They're not going to try and Ravelry lock you with that. They've got a Negate, but for the Negate, they need to discard a Plunder card, and that's going to let them search, which means a lot of the times, 
if they're going to put one of their ships on board don't waste your time using effect don't let them resolve that um don't let them resolve that like destruction effect or that um merc banish use your emergency get the card off the field now the discard now, now they don't get to discard a card in search now they don't get the advantage from that things like that are going to be really really important i'll say as well bls is okay in this but it's not as good as the other matchups because the plunder monsters get extra attack from the equips and then on top of getting extra attack from the equips if they have like three or four monsters all equipped they all get bigger and bigger etc etc and because of that you can't just rely on a big on target monster because they have ones they could they well they don't have big on target monsters but they have a bunch of monsters too which is also very very problematic next up math mech math mech is free if you go first um you should never really lose to math mech going first unless they have like 10 hand traps in hand just because if you contain their link one or you contain their splash mage they lose um similarly firewall if they if they summon firewall let them use the firewall effect first let them go into splash mage let them make the xyz contain the xyz they lose contain the xyz is so big especially if they mess up their zones they may make terror hurts if they're going first it's quite good because super factorial is still a very good card they do still play a lot of hand traps which is hard against you circular is still a card if you don't have a hand trap but i would say math mech matchup for the most part is you favored um what do you need to know about this nib and shifter they lose the nib and shifter and if the deck is just i would say rescue Ace right now is a better version of math mech it's just not as good as killing at math mech but yeah you shouldn't really be losing this matchup if you have specific questions let me know but i don't think you should have anything too specific about math mech labyrinth labyrinth is hard um you don't have a way to deal with spells and traps in the main deck um but the problem is i don't think we're still in a format especially with all these combo decks running around we're not in a format where i would say like main deck like some cyclones and stuff and even main decking like two cyclones or three cyclones isn't enough against a deck like labyrinth because you don't kill fast so labyrinth it's a really really hard matchup if you go first it doesn't matter none of what you do they really care about if you go second it's hard because their cards are really good and they can um eradicate you as well so i'd just say in general labyrinth is probably the hardest matchup in my opinion what do you keep what to keep in mind seeing the labyrinth monsters is quite nice especially because it allows you to set from deck and pop their cards and stuff but it's not amazing it, it, it does the job a little bit bls is nice as a win condition in this deck if you can get to it labyrinth sometimes we'll have a card to out it but a lot of the times they'll have to do neggy things to out it so bls does help you a lot here royal decree what i would say is that if you're in a locals where a lot of people are playing decks like labyrinth i would highly advise just using something like royal decree just play royal decree um get rid of that don't worry about the matchup otherwise you're going to struggle against this deck no matter if you go first or second it's definitely one of your hardest matchups trap chicks and guys so these are what i like to call the bad combo decks um they're both decks that they have the ability to kind of combo and do nonsense but they're trap decks it's just that konami gave them weird support so i would say that trap chicks is the slightly better one because it actually has good traps and its combo potential is still okay whereas geist it combos a lot but the traps aren't actually that good they have to rely on generic traps and floodgates as opposed to trap tricks which has trap holes it can rely on so i'd say trap tricks is a little bit harder most of the time just because if trap chips goes first it is very hard for you to win trap chips will go first they'll set four cards you don't play well into traps so they just start activating traps and then they get more advantage than you they also have memelo memelo is very 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 hard to deal with because memelo will keep popping your back row and it's not once per turn so yeah that's very very difficult to deal with and then also sarah sarah and the trap tricks monsters when they are properly summoned while they're when so while they're link or xyz summoned the xyz is it's while the xyz summoned with material sarah's just when it's link summoned they are unaffected by traps so you lose a lot of your interaction however your cards are big one of the keys against trap tricks is if a card gets on the board they can out it immediately however if they don't out it that turn it's so hard for them to out monsters that's one of the things you find out about trap tricks and so a lot of the times with trap tricks i would say the key is getting cards on board and then getting them to stick there which is easier said than done but if you can get uh if you can play through their traps and then just establish like one turbulence they'll have to do like loads of hoops and stuff to out it on their turn and then each turn keep doing that and it will be nice the good thing about your deck is that especially in the trap tricks matchup you don't care about your cards being banished a lot of times your cards being destroyed doesn't matter and so it means that in this trap tricks matchup you don't insta lose to the traps but it's still hard enough that it's you're not going to have a great time i'd say if you're going first you contain their first monster yeah that usually wins or you prevent their first monster you contain their first monster extinguish the second yeah they need that normal sum to go through which is going to be really really big be careful not to use contain and extinguish on sarah though because you will lose don't do that that's bad but um yeah it's not too bad of a matchup but i would still say it's probably a little bit harder 
than skill match up just because if they win dash run they go first or you and you don't see back row hate you lose geist on the other hand because they can't rely on traps as much and they rely on monsters you actually play well into a lot of guys interruption silk quitters can't beat deal with impulse you normal summon your impulse activate its effect same story as everything else turbulence is quite hard for them to out even though your um your traps do affect them but they have spell and trap negates in the form of protocol was it protocol no it's not protocol it's hextia sorry they have spell and traps negates in the form of hextia so it's not too hard for them to stop your contain and extinguish going through if they really want to but yeah I, I would say you don't need to worry about anything specific with them my huge advice in the alter in the alter guys matchup is just nib them like nib them or something i i don't th see guys being a matchup you need to worry about heavily as rescue ace moving on flunderies now flunderies is really interesting because i would say flunderies plays very very similarly to the mirror um it's not it's not that the deck is the exact same as rescue ace but it plays similar to the mirror and that becomes hugely about advantage in the field spell that's really what it is and they are also very good at dodging targeted effects and they also struggle against back rate, and they also struggle against target spell and trap hate but then they like are really good into monsters because they can dodge monsters in unique ways they don't care they can play shift and all of this yeah, flunder's an interesting matchup so what do you need to worry about featherstorm post side featherstorm will win them the game for free so you do need to be careful about that riser is very very good just because riser is mandatory which means it doesn't need to resolve and i learned this recently because riser does not need to resolve on like all cards for it to, for its effect to go through it means that they are going to benefit off riser and putting cards back from your graveyard on top of your deck and making you brick is going to be annoying so you definitely want don't want riser to go through unexplored winds is also quite frustrating as it's going to let them out your back row and out your your field spell which is really really big in this your field spell is going to really help you win and the quick play as well the quick play is a lot of times going to mean that your preventer's dead that your uh whatever the other card's called your contain your extinguisher dead this is going to be bad but what do you need to do against flunder well going first against flunder i would say your goal is going to be either to establish a card like bls or it's going to be to force them to get into the battle phase against you and then using your contain and extinguish so they have to tribute off their big birds and they can't out your monsters then it becomes go to battle phase reinforce your turbulence attack they can't deal with that attack they can't deal with that that's going to be how you beat them a lot of times. Another nice thing in that um, in that Flounder matchup is that Impen is quite a big card. So Impulse is going to be really, really big here again. I'm sure you guys have been hearing so much Impulse from me today. But yeah, Impulse is a very, very good card in that matchup. BLS is good in this. Droll and Hand Traps in general will hurt Flounderies. And Board Breakers hurt Flounderies as well. So I would actually say that this is one of the few matchups that I would opt into Blinding Second sometimes. Just because if I have Evenly... And like lightning storm for example i know that i can just out whatever board they make and then win they're not going to stop me from playing so it's going to be very very nice bestial d link um I, I don't know if people are still going to play this it's a good deck and i put it as threes because i really feel like this deck is it's really dependent on their pilot again where it's like if their pilot's good it's hard to beat them because they have so many lines and so many different ways they can play it but um what do you need to worry about this power this power is a really really good card especially because it just facilitates so much um, I would say the Heretic Seals of Heavenly, whatever, the Link 2. The Link 2 is a little bit scary if they get to it, but I would say the biggest thing to worry about is that when they you, when they have that Link 2 on board, what you're usually going to want to do is bait it out with something like a Normal Summon Airlifter. So you Normal Summon Airlifter, you've got Emergency. Then let them use that effect. Um, let them use that effect to bounce your card and then just play in Main Phase 2. The difficulty with that is obviously they can kill you on the crack back, but then if, for example... You establish your four traps and you've got like turbulence and you've got a reinforce you're unlikely to die and then you can kill them back on the crack back you do need to worry about the spells and traps if they're playing branded regained and they're playing branded banishment branded regained is high priority you need to out that card early on because it just does so much it's going to draw on their turn draw on your turn summon on their turn summon on your turn very very big so you do need to deal with that card quite early I would also say that um, they sometimes will go into Boron, they sometimes will go into Savage Dragon, all these things. They'll sometimes go into Boroland as well. And so having Underworld Goddess to out those big monsters they go into will be very, very useful. When you're going first against Bistio and D-Link, what would I suggest? I would say, in general, you're going to be looking at containing their first summon. So containing on the Link 1 or containing on their first summon is going to be very nice. Um, the White Dragon Wyver Burst Star and the Black Dragon Collapse Serpent does so much by itself that I would also yeah, heavily advise again. So, for example, they summon the first one, extinguish it. Don't even let them get into the combos with that because that's going to summon a card, then it's going to summon another card, then Chaos Space Draw, and 
it's not worth it and then your contain on striker dragon is also very very good because it makes it hard for them to link and it basically means that for them to kind of get that card out of the zone they need to do all sorts of nonsense they need to like norm summon a bestial over or something which is not going to be easy so definitely contain on striker dragon is big if they play strike dragon even if the strike dragon isn't searching i'd say contain on strike dragon is very very useful if you can rescue on the dispatter as well that is nice because they tend to banish a lot of really big monsters you can bring them back and use that to kill them Borderland Dragon, like I said before, Underworld Goddess is going to be how you out that, and Turbulence is going to be how you out that, but you do need to be careful because their Borderland Dragon has the ability to deny you responding, so you need to kind of be proactive and get rid of that card as quickly as possible. But yeah, generally I'd say it's relatively a skill matchup. What do you need in terms of side? Droll's good, Nib's good. The thing about Shifter is your deck can kill in one turn, but it's not amazing at it, and Bestial if you they have a lot of starters and then if they have a magnum they play fine not fine but they play okay free shifter where they won't die and so i wouldn't personally focus on shifter because if you side in shifter against them and they have magnum they'll probably be fine like you, you're probably not winning that game in my opinion so i don't think shifter is amazing but droll's good nib's good um to elements to elements i think is a really easy it's a worse version of the combo matchups and it really just comes down to the fact that all of the two element monsters all of the all of the two element cards are very fragile because there's one copy of them for the fusions and then they have to do loads of weird lines as well to get into the place so they sometimes have to go into like redo or, or play diviner it, it just makes them very easy to interrupt so two elements two things save and extinguish for any name that they put on board if they put a merly a havenus or shiran just extinguish it now they're fucked because because you've got rid of one of their three fusion summons for the turn so that's very big the next thing as well is that if they make a time fee for door or whatever save your contain and contain it when they try and use this effect that's also going to deny them hugely, which is nice. Um, I'd say Rescue is good in this matchup as well because Rescue allows you to interrupt their graveyard. You can play Shifter as well, which is good. Now, you do need to be careful. A lot of them are playing things like Winda. And Winda, Summon Limit, these kind of cards are good against your deck because you do a lot of random summoning for no reason in Rescue Ace. So you do need to be careful. If they have Winda on the board, how do you out Winda? Well, you're going to need to get a Preventer on board. Otherwise, it's going to be very, very hard. So definitely be careful of that. Graph is also a bit of a frustrating card because Graph's ability to change the effect of your monsters means that they're going to not only negate your card but basically get advantage of it as well. So you need to be careful of that. So what do you need? Super Poly is going to be big here. Dark Ruler is going to be big here. Kurokara is so so good into their deck. Um, I would say as well that Reinforced Turbulence is okay, but you need to be careful. Between Suliak and the Field Spell, they do have ways to deal with Reinforced Turbulence. And because of that, I'd really highly advise not just thinking that's going to win. Let them use those effects, then reinforce your turbulence, and then try and win the game. Fire Engine's also quite nice because they do a lot of random summoning. And a lot of the times, they're going to summon, 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 summon. And then it's like, their interruptions are gone. So it's like, Tia, they tend to have three layers of interruptions. They have the first layer of interruptions. Then they'll fusion summon and they'll make um, Kaleido Heart plus usually drags to Pele as their second layer of summons and then they have their third layer of summons where Collider Heart goes to the grave and then it makes another fusion so sometimes that will be um, the graph of them, they'll make the graph of them sometimes it'll just be to trigger the field spell etc etc. Because of that I think it's best to let them get through those three layers. Use your impulse to bait out layers because they've all got high attack. Use your airlifter to bait out layers because of special summon cards from defense. And then save a card like emergency for right at the end. You bring out your turbulence, you set four. It's going to be hard for Tia to play through that. Um, I, in my opinion, this isn't a hard matchup. It's not one you're going to see a lot of people on. It's not a hard matchup because their deck's just inherently less consistent than yours. Heroes. So, full disclaimer, I don't know a huge amount about heroes. I do know what they end on. I don't know the lines. So, I would say that what do you need to worry about? Dark Angel. Dark Angel's flipping annoying. <laughs> if they have Dark Angel, it's going to be hard to win. Plasma is not impossible to beat because your cards are okay under skill drainish effects. The problem is they don't just make Plasma. They a lot of times will have Plasma DP. That's a, like a common board. And that's very, very hard to beat because your cards are skill drained. They just get popped. But if they do have Plasma on the board, it is possible to pop it with your traps, and etc. DP in general wrecks your deck because, yeah, it just destroys your back row. Every turn it's destroying something. If you can steal it, it's great, but you're not going to steal it, so yeah. And then they have a new trap. I don't know what the name of the trap is, but the trap basically is Revolt, and it summons, like, the Shining Hero or whatever, and, like, pops your whole board. That trap is also very, very hard to deal with. So what are you doing against heroes? I think Contain on the Link 2 is probably pretty good. Extinguish, in my opinion, just say to the end of their combo. Um, the thing about heroes is they still don't really put up a negate on their turn, and so if you just let them combo 
I don't think they can out your back row. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. But I think outside of Absolute Zero, which you can just contain or something, or you can actually extinguish that, I don't think they can really out your back row. Reinforce as well is going to be very, very nice against heroes. They can't really deal with re where Reinforce Turbulence again. So it's going to be very big in this matchup. What do you need to build them? Shifter. Shifter's getting against heroes. Hand traps are getting against heroes. But it is a consistent deck. Heroes is a deck as well. You want to end the game quickly against because they can kill you from nowhere. Un chained Ugh, unchained and then we're close to the end of this guys this has been flipping difficult but anyway yeah so unchained i would say that unchained is a relatively difficult matchup that becomes easy with knowledge i like i'll say for me for example i find unchained easy now because i played it so much before but I'd say if i hadn't played unchained as much i would think it's a difficult matchup so what makes it difficult unchained is a deck that has incredible superior superiority on the field they have so many floating effects, so many ways to dodge cards in the field. Like, they, they dominate the field. If it's just my monster versus your monster, Unchained will always win on the field. However, they struggle with hand advantage, they struggle with consistency, and that's where you're going to be able to beat them because your deck is more consistent, your deck maintains good hand advantage. So what does this mean? Well, firstly, Unchained requires a lot of two-card combos, a lot of 2.5, 1.5 card combos, which means that, again, this is another deck that I would never be risking big terahertz combos. You don't need to. You're just taking risks that you don't need to. The other thing as well is that Unchained loses to non-destructive removal, so your preventer is going to be very nice here. Having cards like Super Poly is going to be really big here. It's going to help Kurokara. This is going to help. Another thing is that with your Contain and Extinguish, you need to be careful about how you use them. So Extinguish, you ideally want to use this on Aruha, on Sarama. You want to use this on the little ones that float. You don't really want to be using Extinguish on the Link 2, for example, because if you use Extinguish on Link 2, it's not floating anyway. And then also, engrave it can banish itself to special something else so you don't really want to use extinguish on that most of the time unless it's specific situations contain on the other hand is a lot better on the link twos on most of the links contain is very very good because most of the links don't float i think the link to unchained soul of rage might add a card back to hand and i think the link three adds a card back to hand but you don't care about that if they get the card back in hand a lot of times it doesn't matter so that's going to be big the contain there and when they do their combo Unchained players a lot of times will be greedy and they'll use the link six to get all I'm saying greedy, it's because they have to. They use the link six to get into the into the link two, and then they do chain link one, link two, chain link two, link six, and it goes to grave. Always hit the contain on that link two because what's gonna happen is the links the level six is going to set a card to field, and then if you didn't negate that level two, they're gonna add a Ruha. I think a Ruha is the red one. They're gonna add the red unchained to hand, pop it, and then they get basically get two cards at the price of one. By stopping this, you mean they just have this trap, which isn't going to be doing much relevant, and then they don't get the search as well. So you definitely always want to stop the link too. It's going to be really, really big. It's going to help you a lot. I also like rescuing this. Rescue in the so with Unchained, I play it very safely. I try and establish the fields, but then I try and steal the abomination. They will eventually make abomination. When they make an abomination, you're out with turbulence and you steal it. And then that dominates the matchup for you because even though they will float over off abomination, it's not enough. Because you have to remember, their cards float and don't do anything other than the level... They have one card you have to worry about, actually, which is the level 8 that, like, discard a card to negate. But even that card is not amazing because you have to discard a card... Sorry, discard a card to destroy. That's not amazing because it's discarding a card to destroy and it doesn't really summon itself when it's destroyed. So you get abomination and then you start popping their stuff and it makes it very, very difficult for them to play and you can usually beat them from there. I don't think Unchained is a hard matchup at all. I think you should be able to dominate them. So Shifter, I personally wouldn't side Shifter. It's mediocre because they can combo through Shifter. Not too bad. Nibiru, Super Poly, Kurokara. You want non-destructive removal. That will dominate Unchained. And then also, again, just play it safe. You're more consistent. You should win. So lastly, we have the Mirror matchup. Now, I may do a separate video on the Mirror again, to be honest. Because I think the Mirror is just so... Yeah, I will do. I'll do another video on the Mirror. But for now, what do I want to say about the Mirror? There's just so many things, so many minor interactions. But if you know every other matchup well, you should know the Mirror well. Um, the biggest thing is the Field Spell. The Field Spell 2 beats the Mirror. The Field Spell is the best card in the Mirror because the grind is what beats you. Most people play the Field Spell 1. If you're really scared of the Mirror, I would play 2 Field Spell in the main or play a second on the side. You out their Field Spell and then you put and then uh, so you out their first one, then you put up your your they out your first one, you put up your second one, you win. The other thing as well is I would always say blind second in the mirror. Um, the traps aren't as good because if both of you are playing smartening, you both have proxy F magician, for example, you're both going to establish a mud dragon early and it makes the traps less good. And so because of that, going second is good. I would also say don't go into your extract for no reason. You go into your extract, but reinforcing all these cards and like emergency to dodge things, 
they don't work on non rescue ace monsters and so you don't want to waste your time going to the extra decks just to get destroyed stay with the main deck monsters that will win you the matchup um rescue is nice as well rescuing their cards from the grave so rescue their turbulence let them do whatever they want to your turbulence play greedily into it and then keep rescuing them rescue from their graveyard that's going to be really big as well but yeah the mirror definitely i would say it's favor for the person going second in my opinion um but yeah it's definitely a good matchup um yeah it'll be it's an interesting one i think i'll do another video and go into it in more depth and maybe show some replays but guys look it's almost been an hour this has been my rescue ace matchup cheat sheet so if you're still here thank you so much for watching <sighs> Rescue Ace is a good deck. Let me know if you've got any questions and I'll talk to you soon.